so tests of hearing and pure pure tone audiometry uh, the usually primary purpose of pure tone test is to determine the type degree and the configuration of the hearing loss whether it is conductive sensory neural or mixed the plot it is uh, the plot of frequency intensity recording and the audiogram it is known as audiogram so how to interpret audiograms that we will discuss basics of audiological evaluation uh, tuning fork tests are the basics of audiological evaluation no test can replace them even after doing audiometry we always determine whether the audiometry is right or wrongly done by tuning fork tests so that is the that is the approach uh, by which you can diagnose that whether it is conductive sensory neural or mixed hearing loss so uh, there are certain terms like air conduction bone conduction which we'll discuss air conduction assess the sensitivity when the signal is transmitted to the outer middle and inner ear and then through the brain to cortex so it is the conduction chain which transfers the sound to the brain so in that conduction your ear canal comes first then your drum then the ossicles and then the rest of the part so testing may be performed using headphones or insert earphones bone conduction bone conduction means the sound transmits through your bone uh, basically from the mastoid process this technique assesses the sensitivity when the signal is transmitted through the bones of the skull to the cochlea and through the audio auditory pathway of the brain so what is masking whenever you do the audiometry test uh, that test it is done separately uh, for the right ear and for the left ear whenever you are doing it for the right ear there is always a possibility that patient is interpreting it falsely just because he is able to hear from the left and you are testing of the right so to mask that left ear we imply we give certain intensity of sound to the left ear so that we can exclusively get the data of right ear only so that is that is known as masking so it represents the constant noise to the non test ear to prevent the crossover from the test ear i hope you can understand what i'm saying <clears throat> what is pure tone why it is known as pure tone audiometry pure tone is a single frequency tone with no harmonic content it is just like a sine wave just like this the above is the high pitch because there is multiple uh, 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 sine waves uh, in there and the, the lower one is the low pitch audiogram the audiogram is a chart of hearing sensitivity with frequency charted on x axis and intensity on the y axis intensity is the level of sound power that is decibel and the frequency is the loudness or perceptual perceptual uh, perceptual correlate of intensity so this is the normal audiogram when uh, you can see the both lines one is air conduction and one is bone conduction this is the normal audiogram where both lines are parallel and there is no gap in between whenever you see such kind of audiogram it is a normal one so this is the normal one so you can assess the abnormal ones according to this tuning fork test first of all you might be aware that rini's test weber's test are there so techniques uh, i'll not go into the detail rini's test is just you place the tuning fork on the master process whenever the patient stops hearing the sound you go for the air conduction that is in front of the ear if the patient is hearing that air conduction sound better than the bone conduction that is a positive rini's test which is normal if the bone conduction is la is louder than the air conduction that is a negative rini's test so that considers that patient might be having some sort of perforation in the ear or some sort of ossicular chain abnormality means the pathway of conduction is defective so normal is air conduction is better than bone conduction always and abnormal is bone conduction is better than the air conduction so suggest the conductive loss as i said and which is also referred to as negative rini's test so here is the bone conduction which is being measured by tuning for and then this the air conduction so always the air conduction is better than the bone conduction in normal people now weber's test weber's test is where you place your tuning fork in the center of the forehead or uh, nasal or glabella wherever you want to put it it should be in center so that you can assess that where the sound is lateralizing 
where to the right ear or to the left ear. So that is the main idea of the Weber's test is it also assess the bone conduction. So normal is sound radiates to both ears. If we are uh, doing the test on ourselves, the sound should radiate on both ears. But what is abnormal? Sound lateralizes to one ear. Say for an example, if patient is com coming to me with right ear deafness and I'm seeing that there is a perforation over there. If that sound is lateralizing to the same ear, it is always a conductive hearing loss. But if that sound is lateralizing towards the opposite ear, it is the sensorineural hearing loss too. So that's how contralateral sensorineural hearing loss. If the sound is lateralizing to the contralateral ear, which is the normal ear, then it is a sensorineural hearing loss. It is as simple as that. So this is how we do Weber's test. You can also put it on the frontal bone or nasion or glabella, wherever you want to place it, but it should be in central. So Puerton audiometry, how it is done? Puerton audiometry should be done in a soundproof room, which we are making in the west zone. In a soundproof room, person is seated comfortably. <laughs> Earphones are applied, which are which are color coded, mainly red for right, blue for R for R, and blue for left. Masking sound is delivered to the non-test ear as always, and start with the high pitch, high decibel intensity, and then gradually lower the uh, decibel intensity so that you can determine that per person's threshold is this for the particular frequency. So gradually decrease the decibel till person hears the sound and respond, and that that's how we plot the sound for every frequency. Find the threshold hearing from 125 hertz to 8 kilohertz. That is the area where a human ear can uh, hear properly. So mark it on the audiogram. Join the points to make air conduction audiogram and place the similar bone vibrator to each ear. Uh, say for an example to master. If I want to conduct a bone conduction test for the right ear, I will place it on the right mastoid. Same for the left mastoid. Deliver the sound through the vibrator and find out the threshold of hearing for different frequencies of the sound. That is for the bone conduction. So by insert earphones, we test air conduction and by the vibrator, we uh, test bone conduction. Use different signs to mark the bone conduction audiogram. But uh, at this moment, you need not to understand what are the signs that mark the bone conduction and air conduction. So types of hearing loss, conductive, sensorineural and mixed. Mixed, that is the mixture of conductive and sensorineural. Conductive hearing loss, deafness. So whenever there is a defect in bone conduction pathway or air conduction pathway, it is always known as conductive hearing loss. The abnormality reduces the effective intensity of the air conducted signal reaching to the cochlea so that your uh, brain hears the low amount of sound. Examples of abnormalities include are perforated eardrums, fluid in the middle ear system, scarring of the tympanic membrane, ossicular chain deformity or separated ossicles as such. The thresholds, uh, not or not air conduction thresholds are poorer than bone conduction thresholds by more than 10 decibels. So whenever you find the gap of 10 decibel or more, it is always a bone conduction, uh, conductive hearing loss. See, this is the lower line and the upper, uh, upward line. The upward line is when you see the right and left open boxes, it is a masked uh, test. So the gap in between these two, this area and this area, there is a gap. So it is air bone gap, means air conduction and bone conduction gap. It is roughly about 25 to 30 decibels. Uh, here are the decibels and here are the frequencies. So you can easily point it out. 10, 20 and 30. So 25 to 30 decibel air bone gap is there. So this, this is a conductive hearing loss. So whenever you see a gap in between these two graphs and both lines are parallel, it is always a pure conductive hearing loss. This is for the baseline guideline so that all of you can diagnose that whether it is conductive or sensory neural. Sensory neural hearing loss. This type of hearing loss is secondary to cochlear abnormality or and abnormality of the auditory nerve or central auditory pathway because the outer ear and middle ear do not reduce the signal intensity of the air conducted signal both air and bone conducted signals are effective in stimulating the cochlea so pure tone air and bone conduction thresholds are within 10 decibel now here is the sensory neural whenever you see the sloping graph without any gap in between this is the sloping graph 
usually the slope starts from 1000 or 2000 uh, hertz of frequency so this is high frequency hearing loss but of sensory neural variety because there is no hormone gap in between so it is a pure form of sensory neural hearing loss now mixed hearing loss mixed hearing loss is the mixture of both this type of hearing loss has a sensory neural and conductive component the autonaudiogram thresholds are poorer than bone conduction thresholds by more than 10 decibel bone conduction thresholds are less than 25 decibel this is the mixed hearing loss you can see the gap you can also see the slope so this is the mixed hearing loss this is typically in those patients who are above 50 or above 60 with perforated eardrum so in those patients conductive as well as sensory neural hearing loss will be there so picture will be of mixed hearing loss degrees of hearing loss you can identify the degree by normal hearing 0 to 25 mild hearing loss 26 to 40 decibel moderate 41 to 55 56 to 70 is moderately severe 71 to 90 is severe hearing loss and the more than 90 decibel is profound hearing loss where we give the certificates of deafness in the government <clears throat> common auditory disorders obviously pressed by accusers that is age induced hearing loss in which you only get sensory neural hearing loss in a purest form otitis media where you can get conductive hearing loss just because otitis media handles your conductive conduction of the sound noise induced hearing loss are always notch like whenever you see a notch in between the frequencies of 2000 or 4000 hertz it is always noise induced hearing loss because that typical notch identifies that person might be working in certain areas where noise pollution is there or person is living around such areas autosclerosis autosclerosis is a uh, uh, abnormal calcification in all the ossicles so that ossicles cannot move so in autosclerosis initially there is always conductive hearing loss but gradually the footplate of stapes also get fixed so it converts into the mixed hearing loss because sensory neural hearing loss steps in later on and Meniere's disease. Meniere's disease always you will have the uh, sensory neural hearing loss but reverse sloping type of. Whenever we see sloping hearing loss it is sensory neural but reverse sloping or in bell shaped uh, hearing loss uh, it is always considered as Meniere's disease. It is always suspected as Meniere's disease rather than I should say. So gunshot damage. Uh, these are the rough ideas about how you interpret the conduction, sensory neural and mixed type of hearing loss, autosclerosis, impacted backs and gunshot. Autosclerosis, hearing loss are also the reverse sloping sometimes. It rises but it also slopes. So it is always sensory neural but the thresholds are very low in these kind of in full blown autosclerosis patients. This is typical of press by acusis. Starting from the 2000 or 1000 hertz, it slopes and it all, all the way goes down to the 8000 till 70 to 90 decibel. And this is, see, uh, conductive deafness, autosclerosis, in which you can see these gaps. This is right and left, both ears are plotted in the same graph. So, this is for right, this is for left. You can see the airborne gap. Airborne gap is more than 60 decibel in autosclerosis as well as ossicular chain discontinuity because airborne gap measures how much conduction loss is there. If all the ossicles are separated, then there will no, not be any conduction. So obviously it will be more than 60 decibel. So airborne gap, whether it is 60 decibel or less than 60 decibel, it can also identify the abnormality you can diagnose on the spot. You can treat patient accordingly. This is press by cases, old age, as you saw in the previous slide, sloping. Thank you all.